Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I wanna talk about what is deflation. And the reason why I'm putting this uh, little video together is because I just did a video on deflation. I said, hey, deflation's begun. And in that video, I thought I did a darn good uh, explanation of it, but I'll let you guys decide. I'll link it somehow to this one. And I talked about how deflation and inflation actually happen at the same time. And I'm gonna go through a couple of uh, definitions. And it's because I get quoted the definitions all the time. They say, you were wrong, Ninja. Deflation is about the contraction of the money supply. It's actually not. Just, you know, I hate to break this to you. And people are like, oh, this guy is an idiot. Well, I've been called worse. Point being is this. There are, that is one definition. When you're talking about the monetary definition of deflation, that is a contraction of the money supply, whereas the definition, monetary definition of inflation is an increase in the money supply leading to uh, prices of goods going up because there's too many dollars chasing too few goods, okay? So as those all those dollars dive in to buy goods and there's less goods than dollars, there's more dollars, people are going, I need it so bad, what is it, 10 bucks? I'll give you 11. Another guy's all, heck with that, I'll give you 12. And that causes inflation. That's a very broad term, but again, we're talking about the economic definition. Now, to understand different economic cycles, you have to understand that there are different uh, time points in a human being's mind that has to sort of, like these boxes need to be checked for them to go, okay, that's happening, check. That's happening, check. Well, that's happening, check. Okay, we must be at this destination then. And uh, economic cycles is no different, okay? So this is from the Oxford, okay? Deflation. It is the action or process of deflating or being deflated. An example was deflation of the illusion that the 1960s were a perpetual party. Well, that's an interesting term, right? We also use the term, especially in economics, when we talk about inflating a balloon, a bubble, and then it pops, or it could be instantaneously a pop, like a collapse, or it could be deflated, where you just let the bottom on all the air, how does that sound come at you right now? You're driving a car going, whoa, what am I hitting? Uh, and that balloon gets smaller, right? Things get deflated. But the economic term that everybody usually wants to go to is the reduction of the general level or of practices in an economy. And it says, there's an example, a time of high unemployment and deflation. Now, I have also seen, that's the Oxford, I've seen Webster's talk about uh, deflation as a general decrease in the money supply. And what I want people to understand is there's multiple definitions for multiple reasons, but here's what's very important. The deflation that has started now is the psychological. The first uh, example I gave you, um, the action or process of deflating or being deflated. We are right now in the psychological deflation. And what we're seeing, even though you are not seeing prices go, uh, going down, what you're seeing is sales stalling. All over the news right now, you can read up and it talks about how uh, uh, holiday season is the, the amount of people that are spending money and what they're spending on is much less than years prior. You are starting to see certain segments of certain industries around the world um, reporting uh, slower sales than normal. We're seeing things like uh, the use of Disney apps, Netflix, all of them are coming in with these uh, numbers that are showing and telling a story of people that are either uh, canceling their subscriptions or they are choosing not to get a new subscription. And why? It's because of the inflation story. The cost of goods are going up around the world. So people have less dollars to throw at things they don't need to live off of, all right? So what's happening is the mental deflation, okay? I have this much money and my bills are now this much. So I gotta spend less. So they're having to cut back. So when I talk about deflation is beginning, because I'm really big on identifying cycles well before the general public knows. Why? Because I'm an investor. I want to take advantage of it. I want to buy lots of stuff. I want to make money. I want to be successful. And I want you to be successful. Because honestly, a true, true success is more than your success. It's making other people successful. It's one thing for me to say, hey, I'm a millionaire multimillionaire, my goal is to be a billionaire by the age of 55. But if I can't take you guys with me, well, cool. Sweet, I accomplished something. There's a lot of people out there that just, you know, me, me, me. And uh, honestly, I, I look at it a little differently. 
I want to bring you guys along with me. Well, with that, I need to identify things before they happen. But it's actually not before they happen. You see, in 2006, and I'm going to give you this example. This is probably the best example I can give you. In 2006, I was literally screaming out loud, and anyone that knew me back then will justify, and guys, jump into the comment section if, if you're on the, watching this video. Yes, he was like that. I was selling all my homes, closing up a real estate business. We had a flip business and then a, um, uh, an investment uh, corp that just uh, you know, held on to like duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes for rental income, right? I was liquidating everything, and I was telling everyone around me, get ready, the market is collapsing, sell all your stuff. Well, the reason why is because in 2005, I was watching the mental deflation happen. People were going, okay, interest rates were going up and debt was getting more expensive to service. So what happened was wages weren't going up at the same rate as your monthly payments because of uh, non-fixed interest rates with mortgages, credit card debt, things like that, auto loans, stuff like that. So what I saw was the mental deflation, the bubble the getting deflated and people going, I don't have as much money now to outbid that next door neighbor on that house. Or I don't have enough money to buy the truck that's fully loaded now. The, the payment's just out of reach because my wages aren't growing fast enough. That's when I started selling everything. And then I obviously was reading about mortgage-backed securities. That's a whole nother story. Point being is this. As that mental bubble started to deflate, what happened was less and less people were spending money, sales started to wane, all over the world, all over, multiple different industries, right? Especially in travel and leisure. That was the first one that, you know, um, I remember that like it was yesterday. Uh, hotels weren't as busy. They were offering all kinds of deals. And I'm like, here, this is, this is what I saw happening. And, um, and then what happens is as these companies start reporting their quarterly reports, it's one thing to get like a, you know, one or two off. You're like, hey, this, this industry is lagging. This industry is lagging. Like, yeah, it's just seasonality. The big boys on Wall Street love to give things names because they're just like, mm, don't look what's going on over there. Buy our products over here. But then what happens is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because more and more people realize what's happening. Just like how we've talked about insiders selling their stock like crazy. Happened last time too. So, so then it just completely goes off of a cliff because most of the people figure it out, right? And then you have more sellers than buyers, okay? And we're just starting that right now. We are in the mental deflation. People are physically spending less money. But the thing is, you're not going to realize that. It's not going to hit Wall Street until uh, Q1 earnings come out or Q, well, Q4 of this year is gonna prove it because it's gonna really show Black Friday's numbers. It's gonna show the Christmas uh, holiday season uh, sales numbers. And then um, you're gonna see things like Netflix, Disney, things like that. They're gonna come out with uh, probably uh, lower earnings. Now, hey, this isn't financial advice. I'm just a dude with a bro and a dream having to explain why people are hurting my feelings on YouTube. Just joking, they don't. Point being is this. We have to spot the trends well in advance. Uh, not because of we're fortune tellers, we can see the future, it's because we're literally using real data. And sometimes that data isn't just the economic version of the Webster's Dictionary of deflation or inflation, it's actually the psychological uh, in definition, of, if you guys know what I mean. So I hope you guys got something out of this because I don't have a fancy whiteboard or I don't. I'm gonna find one. Thank you so much for watching this. The Economic Ninja is out.